So starting based on your keynote yesterday, uh, you said that Aptos is ready for the real world. Uh, that's a strong statement, especially in the market, still, still figuring out how uh, the real world adoption actually means. Um, what gave you the confidence to say that now? And what does the real world mean to you in Aptos uh, context? So when it comes to the real world of applications, I think a lot of claims are made around the world. There's a lot of like these early stage kind of trials sure. that a lot of all the companies are trying out. But, but the reality is there isn't a lot of actually in production. And so, you know, we have a bunch of new use cases that are already in production now. Um, mm -hmm. Last week, we maybe have talked about Lotte, which has a voucher program with millions of users already using it, but being explored now in hotels for stable coins and expanding that program way more uh, with especially the new administration in Korea pushing for stables in a new way. Like, so that's like a good example of a uh, real world largest retailer in South Korea using Aptos seamlessly. No issues behind the scenes, never had a customer complaint. It is something that can match the expectations of what these large enterprises are used to today in the internet. But we announced yesterday that Geo Reliance, who is the largest yep. telco in, in India with over <laughs> half a billion people, is now going to blockchain in a huge way and they're working with Aptos. You know, they tried so many different partners in the past. Uh, because, you know, as you mentioned, there's a lot of hype cycles, there's a lot of people that claim things and this and that. But when it comes down, when the rubber needs to reach the road, you try these products out, you realize they just don't work mm -hmm. for your use case, that's when they call us. Okay. Right? And so Geo worked with us for over a year, mm -hmm. developing a product that would scale to hundreds of millions of people for Geocoin as a large play around all their product suites. That's a centerpiece. Um, but so many more efforts planned beyond that. Mm -hmm. And I think Geo's gonna come in a big way mm -hmm. into the blockchain space and they're gonna, you know, they're not gonna be alone. There yeah. are other institutions that we're talking to that are looking for the right blockchain partner that can support their applications use case. But again, it's time for the real world. Cool, that's powerful. Um, so you mentioned about Geo uh, in India, millions and millions of users. The biggest use case in crypto today. Uh, yes. Um, so many of who don't even realize they're using blockchain, right? That's right. So what does that signal to you about where the industry really is right now? Are we past the early adapter phase? I think we're still in the early phases. Okay. I think, you know, Aptos is definitely leading the charge in terms of that real world adoption. But, you know, we just finished up the World Expo, for example, mm -hmm. uh, in Osaka, where millions of people use Aptos and they didn't realize it. Yeah. But again, <laughs> seamless, no downtime, everything worked really well. That's the way you should expect a technology that underpins, you know, important applications in the world to act, and mm -hmm. exactly that's what it did. I also unveiled um, the global trading engine, which honestly was, I think, one of the most talked about announcement of the day, uh, and we wrote about that. Uh, you called it the foundation of the future financial system. Can you walk us through that? Is this designed to replace the traditional exchanges, or does it coexist with them? And how close are we to seeing tokenized securities, money market funds, actively trading through this system? Well, these centralized exchanges have been around for a long time, okay. to be fair, right? And humans have been trading since the beginning of time, since we started to communicate with each other. Right. So it's, it's not like uh, this is a, a new problem. But I think the recent crash in the markets that happened last week, I think was a great example of showing where yeah. that kind of opacity, the inability for people to kind of see what happens beyond the exchange, and even seeing how you know, like so-called decentralized exchanges who are still having centralized off-chain components reacted to it, leave a lot to be desired. The only way forward, in my opinion, is going to be a world where all of this value transfer, the global economy, moves on chain. Okay. That has to be the future. And we are doing our best part to contribute towards that with the global train engine and with Decibel and with all the other Aptos ecosystem projects that are building towards this decentralized global economy. And I think for a long time, there's been a long, large technology uh, barrier. Uh, they can't keep up the speeds of centralized exchanges. They can't keep up with the, the, the feature sets because right. the languages aren't expressive enough for that. But you know, with Aptos technology, we can do that. Okay. And Sasha unveiled our, our huge plans for how do you build out centralized exchange technology and performance in a decentralized platform and yet maintain that fairness, allow for when you and I trade, no intermediaries, no one front running our trades, no one sandwich attacking our trades, yet being able to have the same access to global and capital markets that those centralized exchanges provide. I'm talking about Sasha. I think um, um, performance with purpose, I think. Um, so Aptos has always been known for speed, speed. So, but yesterday you said something also that really stuck with people is that TPS won't save you. So what did you mean by it? And, and as you roll out the uh, how to pronounce it, Velociraptor upgrade attacking blocks times down to 50 milliseconds. Uh, how do you make the sure speed actually builds trust instead of just uh, being another you know, metric? I think this goes back to the application, mm -hmm. right? So the, the foundation of our capital markets today is really around trust. We trust in the government regulation, we trust in these platforms, mm -hmm. but we want to move that, shift that trust into decentralized infrastructure where you don't need to trust these, these counterparties. In decentralized infrastructure, you're 
you trust the code. Sure. But that means not much because you can anyone can see the code. Anyone can verify it. Anyone can run a validator or a node or participate in the system and know that this, this code is going to be trusted, that the rules are the same for everybody. And that takes a massive technology shift, but also a philosophical shift. And so what we're trying to do is build that technology in such a way that you don't need to trust me, yeah. trust you, trust anybody who's building the system. You can verify for yourself the rules and see that this performance that we're building, being able to get down to 10 millisecond block times and support what Central Exchange is going to do in the past, we can do decentralized, mm -hmm. but in a way that you can trust the system. And there's no need to ask questions to a Binance or to a Coinbase or to others, like what happened on this day? Anyone can take a look at the metrics. Anyone can take a look at the data and know for themselves exactly what happened in the system, why there were liquidations, how the system protected itself, and you know the rules of the road. Yeah. Now, we saw something remarkable yesterday, in my, in, especially for our Korean audience. Uh, BlackRock, uh, Franklin Templeton, Galaxy, Pack Labs, all here talking about building on chain. Uh, that's a very different Wall Street than one we know, what that one we knew a few years, years ago. And uh, do you think we are entering a new phase uh, where blockchain becomes a core part of institutional infrastructure? And how does Aptos balance the regulatory side with staying true to sort of decentralization? I think this is a huge shift that's happening right now. Ever since regulation has passed in the US to make it clear that the government is behind the blockchain-based efforts, capital markets have followed. Sure. That's why we see the Black Rocks and Apollos and others, and I've already tokenized money market funds on top of Aptos, going even deeper with us. And I think this is the this is the, the, the huge end game for crypto, again, is to see these capital markets come on chain. Aptos is very proud to partner alongside all of them. Many of these are investors as well. So they want to, they have, you know, many reasons to benefit from this, this, this transition. You know, we, we believe that we can actually straddle this boundary very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are companies that are IPOing, there are digital asset treasuries that are, that are coming up. And Aptos is really well poised to benefit from this transition given its strong institutional backing, its RDA focus with institutions, and also the kind of uh, the sentiment and the shift within the administration and also the world. Yeah, that was great. Uh, seeing all of those guys talking to each other in one, one shot. You know? That was a lot of uh, institutional lot of leadership and knowledge in one place, for uh, sure. Yeah, that was the highlight, I think, uh, yeah. after yours. So when we talk about adoption, uh, everyone measures this differently. Um, some pointed to wallet accounts, some to transactions, some to TVL. But for you, what's the real indicator? How do you personally define success uh, for Aptos adoption in the real world? I think the best way you can measure the success is going to be kind of a couple of metrics. One is going to be the number of users transacting uh, with value on chain. And so we see that already Aptos is the number two chain for USDT, which is the largest stable in the world, uh, transacted. And then we just started adopting them early this year. Those kind of metrics, I think, are things we care about. On Decibel, it'll be volume, it'll be users interacting, kind of even whales that are coming on the platform and making significant positions. But it'll also be things like, what are the spreads? What's the liquidity available? Mm -hmm. um, those, that's also something we want to see. Okay, okay. You mentioned that Aptos is preparing for AI agents uh, transacting on chain, uh, which sounds sound sort of futuristic, uh, but also inevitable. Uh, what might that look like, in your opinion? And are we talking about autonomous systems actually managing assets, paying for data, or even issuing uh, loans or micro loans? Uh, and what makes Aptos particularly suited for that feature? It is clearly the future that you know we, we already have agents that act on our behalf, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I act as an agent for my wife to negotiate with a car dealer, right, for example, or she might, uh, you know, interact on my behalf to, you know, get some groceries, for example. But this is all becoming automated. Uh, and the agents are becoming very, very intelligent. And, uh, you know, we also had robo investors in the past, right, investing in our portfolios. We have mutual funds, right, that are kind of rebalancing on our behalf. Uh -huh. So this is clear. it's not something new. It's just something that's going to become more and more automated over time. Already the trades that happen on NASDAQ are 60 to 80% automated, right, uh, and, and powered by kind of um, these these agents on our behalf. So it's not something new. It's something that's happened in the past, and it's only going to happen in the future with the advent of um, AI technology growing so quickly. But the future to us is really about how does all this become on chain? We want to see payments volume. You know, our payments. Like, how do we get uh, paid by our employers uh, going to uh, accounts that generate yield? But the yield should then be kind of portfolio managed by agents. We announced a great investment into a Neil Bank, uh, actually very recently. Uh, and so this is clearly the future for us. Uh, it goes alongside our trading engine. Trading is kind of a piece of that. So from banking, Neil Banking, to investing, to trading, to offboarding into fiat. And then one day we don't offboard a fiat because a fiat just stays on chain. Yeah. Like that's the, that's the clear answer for us. Talking about some broader industry shift right now. Um, Across the industry, we are seeing AI deep, deep in and tokenization start to overlap. Do you see that as a convergence, a sort of a new structural 
uh, cycle or are we still in the sort of experimental stage of that sort of transformation? Definitely experimental stage. Right? Okay. But this is where I think we're very, very excited about Shelby's potential in this space. Yeah. We've seen the rise of Neo Clouds as a important new fabric for AI computing. And they need data. That's yeah. the reality, right? They need the data to be moved around the world very rapidly to, to kind of support their use cases, the inferences, the trainings for LLMs. Shelby is the only kind of si uh, system out there that can provide this like contractless infrastructure where you can access your data very, very cheap, cheaper than existing clouds, mm -hmm. have it served incredibly fast at some second reads, um, and also support the scale and reliability mm -hmm. that you would expect from any enterprise grade system. Today, you know, the AI industry is going to be, you know, is, is already, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars and only to grow in the future. And Shelby, we believe, should be the centerpiece of that. Now, we'll talk about that, Shelby, after this interview with uh, Pranav. You've said before that Aptos isn't just uh, another blockchain, it's an economic foundation. If we jump ahead five years from now, uh, what does that foundation look like and what will be people be doing on Aptos without even realizing it's a blockchain? I think you will see Aptos almost like the way you think about like the government of the US, mm -hmm. right? Like the government of the US is, is designed to kind of build the infrastructure to have incredible businesses being built on top of it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have all these institutions, you have successful enterprises around Facebook and Google and Visa and MasterCard being built. And we will measure that success in terms of the billion dollar, tens of billion dollar businesses that are being deployed on top to us. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in five years, we ex expect to have hopefully a trillion dollar type economy. Okay, okay. Before we wrap up, one personal question. What's one misconception about Aptos or by you that you want to straighten today? I would say it's, you know, a lot of blockchains have been kind of built, you know, more general purpose. And I think this is not not the right way to, to build out infrastructure. Like, we, we've taken a big bet on making Glaptos the global trading engine and building everything in our ecosystem from the code uh, to the way we do B to the way that we support developers and encourage developers on top of this. We think this is the right bet to take, okay. um, that this is the right use case for blockchain and it underpins all the foundations of application we built on top of it. That's a significant bet. Uh, and I think um, I just want people to understand that this is the direction we're taking and we, we, we think it's the right vision towards a trillion dollar type economy.